Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, My Intuition uh, Chemistry Classes for Computer Science and Engineering as per the new uh, scheme BCHES102202, 102 for the first semester and 202 for the second semester offered by Visheshra Technological University. And my class videos are covering uh, some of the important questions uh, with uh, revised Bloom's taxonomy level is indicator. Mainly, I'm considering the fourth level so that level 2 level 3 can be covered around that and the possible answers that means i am giving uh, whatever you want to know about the particular topic which is there in the syllabus no, i am not uh, limiting to a small topic i am giving maximum possible explanation uh, for uh, the given topic so this particular class video i am covering the disposable sensors introduction only disposable sensors remaining i will cover in the next classes a previous topics so we already i already covered and it is there in my youtube channel uh, so, uh, disposable sensors, uh, questions I am giving, some of the uh, major questions, so many questions I am including so that I can cover all the topics related to that. Evaluate the effectiveness of various materials used in the construction of disposable sensors and compare their sensing mechanism. How do these factors impact the performance of the sensors in detecting biomolecules or pesticides? That is level 4 question. Analyze the potential applications of disposable sensors in various industries such as healthcare, environmental monitoring and food safety. How do the advantages of disposable sensors such as their low cost and ease of use compare to traditional analytical techniques in these applications? Compare and contrast the limitations of traditional analytical techniques with the recent breakthroughs in disposable sensors. How have oh, disposable sensors advanced? the field of biomolecule and pesticide detection okay that i will be covering the next uh, classes in detail uh, i am just giving the hint here creating a plan for the optimizing the performance of a disposable sensor for the detection of a specific biomolecules or pesticides how do you uh, choose the sensing material and what fabrication techniques would, uh, would you use what factors would you need to consider to ensure the sensors specificity and the sensitivity a meaning of disposable sensors okay so by the word itself uh, it is something which we can uh, use one single use and uh, then we can throw it uh, not throwing to the atmosphere as such environment as such we have to uh, keep it in a throw to a safer uh, level so that it can be treated accordingly so these sensors are um, mainly used in medical and diagnostic applications to measure various uh, physiological parameters such as heart rate uh, blood pressure uh, glucose level and oxygen saturations we have available it is already available in the market we purchase many thing from the medical shop to have a have a check on our uh, uh, blood uh, heart rate or uh, blood pressure uh, uh, glucose level glucose level uh, that is the sugar uh, level uh, as well as the oxygen saturation we check uh, and it, it is one time use and we cannot uh, use it again so we have to dispose it they are convenient and they are cost effective because they eliminate the need for uh, cleaning and sterilization which can be a time consuming and expensive they also reduce the risk of cross contamination between the patients and can be easily disposed of after the use even it uh, reduces the, um, the every time uh, visit to the hospital uh, we can check we can have a basic checkup uh, it will give the reading and uh, it will indicate whether it is uh, uh, exceed, uh, uh, over the limit or uh, uh, whether we need to approach a consultant or a doctor uh, it also will be indicated by the disposable sensors in addition to medical application they are also used in environmental monitoring uh, food and beverage production uh, industrial manufacturing and they are often uh, desi uh, designed to be very simple to use and uh, require minimum calibration making them an attractive option for a wide range of application. That means we don't want an expert, an, uh, a medical expert to use it or an, an, uh, an uh, experienced person only required. If you teach them how to operate, anyone, any layman can operate that disposable sensor and get the uh, required result. Now, some of the material which are used in uh, this type of uh, disposable sensors, uh, the examples also I'm giving here, like polymers. Uh, Polymers are often uh, uh, the base material which is used in uh, disposable sensors uh, because they are having very flexibility, they are having a lightweight uh, and can be easily molded into different shapes and designs. Example of uh, some of the polymers which are used are PDMS that is polydimethyl siloxane, then polyethylene, uh, polyethylene we know polyethylene sheets we are using a particular design for this one, polypropylene as well, we commonly use, PDMS is one, one of the term which we 
usually we use in term with the medical uh, applications polyethylene and polypropylene is also having application in disposable sensors then conductive material disposable sensors often require the conductive material to measure the changes in electrical or electrochemical signal so these material include metals such as gold silver uh, uh, which are costly actually copper uh, as conductive polymers and even conductive polymers uh, which are polypyrrole and polyaniline okay, in previous uh, example i took the polymers uh, that i took only the normal polymers uh, we have conducting polymers uh, like polypyrrole and polyaniline they are also used in disposable sensors the our organic materials which are used uh, includes uh, the enzymes uh, antibodies and nucleic acids uh, they are mainly um, uh, to detect the chemical and biological analytes we use then carbon based material uh, such as graphene uh, carbon nanotubes cnts uh, carbon black um, uh, they are also used to, to check the uh, changes in electrical conductivity or resistivity because they are very good conductors Uh, ceramics uh, ceramics are also used in uh, disposable sensors where we have a very high temperature uh, applications required uh, because ceramics have a high temperature stability examples include the alumina and zirconia uh, glass materials are also used in uh, disposable sensors uh, uh, for optical uh, detection such as fluorescence or absorbance uh, spectroscopy applications we use uh, glass material then choice of sensing material how we choose how uh, a person who is working in a disposable sensor they choose the uh, sensing material what are the choices they have it depends upon several factors which include uh, the desired sensing mechanism the analyte which we the sample that you want to analyze or the the target one uh, and application of the based on the requirement of, of the applications some key considerations are uh, given here like uh, sensitivity and selectivity is one of the criteria that we have to uh, choose so when uh, we have to select when uh, identifying the sensing material uh, the sensing material should be very sensitive to the changes in the target analyte it should be selective enough to avoid any interference from the other substances in the sample uh, for example in glucose sensing uh, sensing material should be able to detect uh, the glucose and uh, not be influenced by other sugars uh, or any other compounds which are similar to that one which may interfere so we have to be very careful in uh, selecting uh, uh, the material stability and durability uh, the sensing material should be very stable it should be durable under the conditions of use it may be having high temperature low temperature changes in humidity changes in ph the material that we use should have stability and it should be durable for long time Uh, for disposable sensor the sensing material should have a long shelf life uh, and resistant to de degradation during storage long shelf life means uh, if you are not using that means we are keeping in a shelf or we are keeping in a, a side that we call as shelf life uh, the time that we are giving for the material to be used before use and after again uh, after sometimes uh, me see how much time and uh, anyhow disposable sensors are one time are used so if you are not using it uh, we have purchased it uh, and how long we can keep it uh, that is tells this uh, shelf life therefore the material that we use should have high, a long shelf uh, shelf life uh, it should be resistant to the degradation and uh, during the storage compatibility with the fabrication techniques uh, we have many different fabrication techniques that i will explain and a material should be compatible uh, it should uh, will not get degraded it will not lose its property during that uh, uh technique that we used to fabricate that uh, sensor to uh, produce the sensor to get the sensor that we call as the fabrication during uh, it should not undergo any changes uh, the fabrication techniques such as printing uh, deposition electro spinning that are all the material should be able to adhere to the substrate uh, and other layers without causing damage or degradation means the material that we use it should be it should stick with the other material which we are using it should not uh, separate us immediately it should not form any separate layer formation therefore uh, it should not even damage the uh, other material which are used it should not degrade so it should be chemically inert also uh, the cost effectiveness uh, finally uh, we have to think about the cost of the product otherwise uh, a common man cannot uh, offer it uh, even a normal person cannot offer uh, cannot uh, use it therefore cost effectiveness is one of the main uh, uh choice of a sensing material uh, 
regulatory requirements so depending on the intended use of the sensor certain regulatory requirements may apply such as the biocompatibility for medical devices that means if you are having a dispersal sensor which we have you have to uh, bring in contact with a person's body or any animal's body or any medical devices uh, it should be compatible with our body it should not create an allergic uh, reactions it should not uh, create any other uh, issues to the person uh, or to the uh, where we are applying it uh, mainly in bio, uh, medical devices we call it as it should have biocompatibility uh, the sensing material should be evaluated and selected based on this requirement government rules are there many regulatory requirements are there it should pass if you if you are using the material for a medical devices enzymes <clears throat> enzymes are commonly used in uh, biosensors to detect the unlike to uh, glucose lactate and uh, cholesterol um, and it can selectively uh, recognize and react with the specific analyte producing a detectable signal that can be measured uh, antibodies antibodies uh, are used in uh, immunoassays to detect the uh, and measure the proteins or other bio biomolecules present it can selectively recognize and bind to their target analyte allowing for high sensitive and uh, specific detection that means it will uh, go and attach to the uh, protein molecules based on that attachment it produces the uh, it, it gives the signal therefore uh, antibodies are also used conductive materials conductive materials are some of the material that we are using uh, such as gold silver carbon nanotubes uh, uh, even uh, some of the polyaniline uh, uh, already uh, covered in the previous topic it can act as an electrode or as a uh, mediator to facilitate the transfer of electron for the movement of electron between the analyte and the electrode material polymers already explained uh, polymers like a pdm or polyethylene uh, can be used as substrate uh, or as a coating in disposable sensors they have flexibility biocompatible and can uh, can be easily molded uh, during the fabrication techniques uh, to different shapes and sizes so we can have a better design fluorescent dyes are also uh, some of the material which we are using uh, used mainly in optical sensors to measure the changes in fluorescence intensity or of for the lifetime uh, lifetime of a uh, material to identify how long it was there in the uh, in the earth crust or in the in the earth uh, these dyes can be sensitive to changes in ph or oxygen concentration or even other analytes metal oxides are another materials uh, which are used uh, th such as zinc oxide or titanium dioxide which can be used in gas sensors to detect the changes in gas concentration so the um, previous uh, videos i covered the gas sensors uh, used for uh, other uh, detection applications there also we came we discussed about these materials uh, it should be very selective and it should interact with uh, the gases uh, without interfering uh, with other gases uh, all those criteria we discussed uh, it's already explained in uh, i have already explained in my previous class video so some of the general steps uh, which are you, you followed uh, for the construction of dispersible sensors the actual uh, construction it varies from uh, devices uh, different type of dispersible sensors are there so a common uh, general steps are used to substrate preparation uh, to prepare a substrate uh, which is a base material on to which the elements are attached that means something uh, to hold that uh, sensing material uh, that we call as a substrate uh, preparation it may be made of plastic glass or other material like a ceramic or a, uh, it is pre-treated with the coating or functionalization to enhance their even their performance because it should uh, attach the sensing material properly to that it should not degrade it also so criteria it should be stable under high temperature uh, different varying uh, atmosphere also it should be uh, stable then sensing element deposition how the sensing element can be deposited on that uh, substrate uh, the sensing elements uh, which I can call as the electrodes in electrochemistry or it may be an enzyme coating a thin layer of enzyme or a conductive materials are uh, coated over that or deposit on the substrate using techniques such as uh, normal printing methods or spraying or even electro spinning methods and then the, uh, sensor assembly uh, the sensing element it is often covered with a uh, protective layer such as a hydrogel or a thin film to prevent it from being damaged or degraded during the use uh, the sensing element which we uh, coated on the um, uh, substrate uh, it should have some protective layer further protective layer are uh, needed uh, 
like some hydrogels are used hydrogels are some of the uh, polymer uh, meti polymeric materials which can absorb uh, 100 times of its weight it can absorb water 100 times than that of its uh, original uh, size or weight uh, we call them as hydrogels or you can use uh, some thin films uh, to prevent uh, the sensing material to be uh, getting damaged uh, the protective layer may also enhance the selectivity sensitivity if the protective layer also supports the sensing material uh, for uh, improving its sensing that also will be very uh, useful connection and wiring uh, depending on, upon the sensing mechanism the sensor may require a wiring or other connections to measure the changes in the electrical or electrochemical signals these connections are typically made using a conductive material like silver or silver paste or carbon ink are used as a connection not a normal uh, connection that we see in our uh, normal elect uh, electronic uh, applications the smaller devices therefore we have to have connection in of that uh, mode packing <clears throat> once the sensing element and connections are in place the sensor is packed in a in a sterile atmosphere uh, disposable container to prevent the contamination and ensure its uh, usability the packing may also include a uh, instruction for the use uh, that is normal uh, government rules we should uh, tell how to use uh, uh, what are the steps to be pro uh, used to calibrate it before use uh, and other relevant information should be there in the packing so some common sensor fabrication techniques are given here like printing printing we know already normal printing uh, air force sheet printing or normal uh, uh, printing press printing the same concept only used but the ink in, in place of the normal black or color ink we have using the sensing material as the uh, ink here so the printing techniques such as screen printing uh, inkjet printing uh, flexographic printing it can be used to deposit sensing material to a substrate uh, they are often used for large scale production of uh, disposable sensors due to their cost effectiveness and scale it means they are very big sheet it can be printed then the required amount we can cut and use it that is large scale production uh, it is used oh electro spinning second method uh, electro spinning uh, it is a technique which can be used to create uh, nano fibers from polymers or uh, other materials that means uh, uh, whenever uh, the uh, fiber the polymers are formed uh, it is spin at a very high speed uh, so that uh, it will sp spray uh, that spraying uh, causes the polymer uh, form forming stage uh, polymer forming stage it will be in liquid state uh, suddenly it will be converted into solid state uh, so it become very fine fibers of nano size you know what is nano size uh, 10 to the power minus 9 that much size fibers if we, if we can prepare which can be used as the sensing material that is electro spinning these nano fibers it can be used as the sensing element in disposable sensors to providing a high surface area to volume ratio and enhanced uh, sensitivity uh, spin coating. Spin coating uh, that means uh, keeping a substrate on a plate, uh, adding the uh, drop on that uh, that whatever sensing material on the top and it is allowed to spin so that it will spread on that uh, uh, substrate uh, which is called as the spin coating method. Uh, again it is used in uh, nanotechnology mainly. It is a technique used to deposit very thin films, not normal thin film that we use. Uh, very fine thin films can be prepared as a substrate uh, by spin coating method microfabrication microfabrication techniques such as the photolithography etching and the deposition can be used to create a micro or nano size structure on the uh, substrate uh, it can be used to enhance the sensitivity or selectivity of the sensing element uh, lithography means uh, uh, adding uh, the sensing element uh, of the nano size uh, by using the help of a uh, photo sensor uh, lithography means writing actually the uh, word lithography is writing we are writing actually in in a, in a term we can say we are writing uh, on the substrate uh, wherever we need the shape of that sensing uh, uh, material where it has to be coated that we are writing using a method known as photolithography etching etching is a method where we have a sensing element uh, where we need uh, that uh, desired shape uh, that will be covered with some protective layer the remaining things are etched and removed therefore we will be getting the uh, shape of that uh, sensing uh, material which we needed that is called as etching deposition uh, deposition mainly comes under the chemistry term actually 
uh, where we are allowing that uh, sensing element to deposit on the substrate uh, based on the electrochemical condition which is maintained uh, or any other uh, deposition method uh, also used uh, for uh, forming the uh, uh, sensors sensor coating on the substrate electro deposition okay electro deposition which already i explained in just now uh, where uh, conductive materials are used the conductive materials can be easily used to deposit on the substrate by using uh, the anode cathode concept uh, which is called as electro deposition uh, aerosol gel uh, printing aerosol uh, gel printing it is a method which is used to deposit a functional materials on the substrate using the focused stream of aerosol droplets aerosols are a special type of materials having a very uh, lightweight materials with a um, uh, lot of uh, uh, space inside that uh, i'm not getting the proper word to be used very soft material which are used uh, those droplets are uh, allowed to uh, stick on the substrate uh, with a very forced uh, a focused stream a focused stream of uh, aerosol droplets are allowed to uh, hit on the substrate so it will go and uh, stick on that uh, substrate surface uh, based on the requirement that we have it will create a fine scale patterns on the functionalized layer on the sensing material and the basic principle of uh, disposable sensors the basic principle involves the interaction between the sensing material and the target analyte which produces a measurable signal that can be detected and quantified okay that is the basics uh, you should sense uh, and should produce the signal uh, so it is common sense actually uh, one of the one that is recognition the material should uh, recognize uh, and uh, interact with the target analyte the interaction can be based on various mechanisms such as the enzyme substrate reaction antibody antigen binding or chemical adsorption based on uh, where we are applying if you are applying on a uh, uh, a place where uh, like uh, pesticide detection or somewhere we use enzyme as the sensing material it should interact with the substrate uh, and enzyme substrate reaction so we know enzymes uh, we actually call as a, a catalyst uh, key lock mechanism and all you might have studied uh, when you study about enzyme that uh, key lock mechanism and that enzyme substrate reaction we have to consider same way antibody antigen uh, that is in uh, um, biomedical application antigen antibody interaction the binding uh, should be there then only it gives the sensing or if, if it is normal environmental application uh, then it should have a uh, adsorption the gas adsorption or any other chemical it should be adsorbed on the sensing material then only it will produce the uh, required uh, recognition recognition it will rec recognize the presence transduction transduction that is the uh, conversion of one form of energy to the other form uh, so that we can uh, uh, detect it uh, converting uh, whatever uh, whether it is enzyme uh, uh, substrate interaction or antibody antigen interaction or chemical adsorption uh, that is already producing some some changes there that changes has to be converted into a readable signal form uh, detectable uh, form that is known as tra transduction which can be achieved through various mechanisms such as electrochemical optical or mechanical mechanism based on the application that we have then amplification because uh, we are using very small sensing element very small uh, analyte is detected uh, therefore the producer signal also will be very very small signal it has to be amplified so for amplification different techniques are used uh, okay that only said uh, uh, the signal it will be very weak uh, it has to be amplified uh, uh, using a signal amplifiers uh, calibration <clears throat> before use the response sensor must be calibrated uh, how to calibrate it that will be uh, given in the package uh, as i mentioned the package is one of the criteria uh, uh, based on that we have to calibrate it uh, before use uh, otherwise it may not give the uh, uh, proper result so we have to follow the instruction given there we have to make it ready uh, that you call as calibration after calibration only we have to use it uh, it, it involves testing the sensor with the non concentration of the target and light uh, comparing the measurable signal with expected values if it is a uh, it requires a such uh, calibration otherwise calibration will be based on the uh, instructions which are given there the specific mechanism used in each step depends upon the type of sensing material the transduction method and application requirement so uh, based general uh, explanation given not that only that method uh, will be applicable everywhere 
ओके ना जनरल से मेकानिम एंड डिस्पोसल से इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल से टाइप आफ इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल से देन इट इनवाल दि एलक्ट्रिक सिक्नल प्रोड्यूस बै दि इंट्राशन बिटवी द से मेटीरियल अंड दि टारगेट अनालैस टारगेट आफ अनाल अनालैस दि मेटीरियल इट कैन आक्ट एन एलेक्ट्रोड और ए मीडियेटर बिटवी द अनालट एंड दि इलेक्ट्रोड ओके वि हव एनी हव एलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल से नीड टू हव एलेक्ट्रोड विच वी कॉल आज दि वर्किंग एलेक्ट्रोड then there will be a reference electrode there will be a indicator electrode uh, with with that connection we are getting the uh, output uh, it is commonly used to detect glucose uh, lactate and other small molecules optical sensing optic optic means something involved uh, with light so light intensity wavelength or polarization uh, it can be caused uh, the interaction between the sensing material and target analysis that is used in uh, optical sensing it can be based on various mechanisms such as the uh, absorption of light uh, a fluorescence of the material uh, or a surface pl pl plasmon resonance applications uh, these are uh, some of the uh, sensing mechanism that we have to understand uh, the sensing uh, optical sensing it is commonly used to detect proteins nucleic acid and other biomolecules piezoelectric sensing uh, it involves the measurement of changes in the mechanical uh, stress or strain caused by the interaction between the sensing material and the, the target piezoelectric means uh, yeah, it produces uh, uh, electricity or it produces some uh, measurable signal when pressure is applied okay therefore any changes uh, in the pressure or stress strain uh, that can be detected by piezoelectric sensing uh, it commonly used to detect gases chemicals and other small molecules which creates the pressure changes thermal sensing uh, something related to temperature uh, interact because change in temperature are uh, detected using uh, thermal sensing commonly used to detect gases chemicals and other small molecules uh, which uh, causes the thermal changes okay based on that uh, it, sen it senses magnetic sensing uh, anything which have magnetic property any material which have magnetic property it can be detected using a magnetic sensor uh, the interaction between uh, the magnetic uh, or the magnetic field produced by the sensing element that is used for uh, this particular uh, uh, mechanism uh, used to detect the magnetic particles uh, or to measure the magnetic properties of materials optimization of a sensor performance so how we have to optimize the performance of the sensor Uh, that means uh, we need to have a proper uh, material selection we have to have uh, a choice of sensing material uh, it uh, significantly affect the perform performance of the uh, disposable sensors uh, therefore the manufacturer should have uh, how uh, should evaluate uh, you know, while during uh, selecting the sensing material uh, it should have high specific sensitivity and uh, it should be very stable also surface modifications uh, Uh, such as the functionalization uh, functionalization means adding some functional groups uh, chemistry there are so many functional groups are there uh, that we studied uh, which can be used uh, for a particular application or we are having a particular coating uh, or uh, any patterning uh, on the surface patterning or the, on the substrate uh, the um, sensing material how we pattern it uh, all these uh, are are comes under the surface modification uh. Uh, transduction uh, optimization uh, uh, converting the signal uh, uh, which converting the changes uh, to a readable sig uh, signal uh, its optimization also required uh, they should uh, manufacturer should uh, create, uh, carefully select and optimize the transduction mechanism to ensure high sensitivity to signal to noise ratio amplification techniques uh, uh, such as uh, signal amplifiers uh, enzyme amplifiers uh, or nanoparticle amplifiers uh, they are used to enhance the uh, signal which are produced calibration uh, once again it comes uh, uh, it is very critical uh, for the accuracy and uh, reliability of the disposable sensors so therefore a uh, manufacturer should uh, carefully calibrate uh, before uh, using the uh, uh, disposable sensor or before uh, uh, giving the disposable sensor to the market manufacturing consistency now when we manufacture it it should be consistent it should give the consistent performance 
and not that one product uh, produced giving a reading another product giving a, a different reading means uh, we cannot depend on that uh, gives false result therefore a consistency required uh, in the manufacturing some of the key applications of uh, dispersive sensors uh, uh, two more applications which are there in the syllabus already it is there other than that some of the key applications like uh, medical diagnostics uh, uh, they are widely used in uh, medical diagnostics like uh, uh, of uh, various biomarkers uh, such as glucose lactate uh, cholesterol and uh, hemoglobin they are also used for monitoring uh, vital signals uh, such as the heart rate uh, blood pressure <coughs> and uh, other respiratory uh, and uh, resp not other uh, respiratory rates <coughs> environmental monitoring uh, dispersal sensors are used for monitoring various environmental parameters uh, uh, such as the air or water quality the moisture uh, or the soil moisture uh, temperature uh, soil moisture and all it is needed for the agriculture applications uh, along with the environmental monitoring they are also used for the detection of uh, pollutants uh, such as heavy metals uh, pesticides and uh, pathogens food and beverage uh, monitoring uh, uh, disposable sensors are used in the food and beverage industry for the detection of uh, various contaminants such as bacteria allergens and uh, toxins they are also used for monitoring food quality parameters uh, uh, food quality parameters such as uh, ph uh, moisture and uh, the sugar content in that <coughs> Industrial process control. So there are, there are many industrial processes handling the enzymes or food material or whatever it may be. Comes under the industrial process control to monitor many parameters such as the temperature, pressure, flow rate, which will affect the industrial production. There we can use disposable sensors. They are also used to detect the presence of contaminants or any other chemicals or particles during the process. Bioprocessing, uh, they are mainly used in uh, monitoring various parameters such as the uh, presence of or uh, the uh, requirement of dissolved oxygen, uh, pH uh, and the cell dens uh, density in the bioprocessing method. Okay, cell means uh, that body, uh, whatever cell we have, that cell density only mentioned here. They are also used for the detection of uh, contaminants uh, such as endoxins uh, in the bioprocess. Uh, endoxin one of the main contaminant uh, which causes uh, trouble in bioprocessing, it has to be detected. So, some of the advantages of using uh, disposable sensors like it has cost effectiveness, uh, much cost effective than traditional analytic techniques uh, like uh, chromatography or mass spectroscopy, which are there in uh, mainly in some of the uh, chemistry labs, uh, sophisticated chemistry labs, not all normal chemistry labs cannot afford it. Uh, or even uh, some of the major uh, hospitals uh, they are having it so uh, dispersal sensors are very much uh, cost effective uh, compared to that uh, then going to a hospital or a, a clinic and uh, giving our sample for a testing uh, we can have this type of a dispersal sensors uh, uh, because it needs a very small quantity of the analyte also single use though even though it is uh, for single use it reduces the need of the expensive uh, equipments and uh, reagents uh, portable and easy to use it is a very small device therefore we can carry with us uh, wherever we go uh, so on the time of requirement uh, we can uh, use it uh, then uh, reaching to the place where uh, uh, we have to go we have to reach uh, if we cannot reach uh, such a uh, distance uh, places uh, we can use a port we can use as portable they also require minimal training to use, uh, making them accessible to wide range of uh, users. Real-time monitoring. So, it will give the real-time uh, value than taking the sample from uh, one site and taking to some other places and doing. Real-time, there only uh, it will give the uh, result uh, and even if any ch environmental changes are there, that also can be detected immediately on, on the spot. If therefore, it is very important in critical applications such as the medical diagnosis of environmental monitoring. Minimal sample preparation. There is not much um, sample preparation as such. Uh, take that uh, disposable sensor, uh, use it to get the result. Okay. Otherwise, uh, some other methods uh, we have to prepare the sample ready for the analysis. All those uh, can be avoided here. So the time and uh, cost, uh, the requirement of an uh, expert, all those can be avoided uh, by using disposable sensors.
Uh, this is very important when uh, the samples that we have very very limited samples uh, or precious samples uh, or uh, we don't have time uh, to prepare the samples all this time we can uh, have uh, this type of uh, disposable sensor so it also have reduced the risk of uh, contamination uh, because they are kept in a, uh, they are prepared such a way that uh, it, it will not be affected by other contamination only during the application we are uh, uh, exposing it uh, emitter will get the result uh, then we are not reusing it therefore uh, very less reduced risk of contamination uh, it is very important uh, when the uh, where the sample purity accuracy are critical uh, mainly in uh, medical diagnosis or uh, bioprocessing applications uh, limitations uh, anyhow when we have advantages there will be some limitations uh, then only we have can improve uh, limited sensitivity they may have a lower sensitivity than traditional techniques such as chromatography or mass spectroscopy uh, which will limit their ability to detect low concentrations of analyte uh, okay one of the limitation limited dynamic based on the application not for all general uh, statement it, the others are uh, limited dynamic range uh, the range of uh, the sample or range of uh, uh, analyte concentration uh, is limited uh, limited specificity we can we don't have uh, too much specificity a uh, very limited uh, so it, uh, which can result in false positive or false negative results uh, limited shelf life uh, okay even though we say that uh, our disposal sensor should have long shelf life but actually it is limited than compared to other anal analytical techniques uh, which can be used for uh, many years uh, but disposal sensor has to be used within a year or uh, so uh, not uh, as uh, much uh, shelf life as that of other traditional uh, methods uh, reusability okay no reusable as such uh, or limited reusability one or two times uh, it can be used uh, that that is also and also uh, it uh, increases the environmental impact because whatever uh, uh, we say uh, whatever awareness is created people will be throwing uh, the sensors to the environment which will create some uh, environmental impact lack of standardization uh, they may lack standardization across manufacturers because it's difficult to compare result between different sensors or uh, establish one uh, quality control measure many uh, manufacturers are preparing uh, same uh, disposal sensors uh, they may not be having the same standard standard deviation will be there that will be having confusion among the users and some of the recent break, break, breakthroughs in the field of disposal sensors what is next in the dis, disposal sensor what is the meaning of a recent breakthrough uh, it can be used as a wearable sensors so uh, work is going on not that it is already there in the work is go going on uh, to have uh, wearable sensors uh, providing real time monitoring or uh, various bi biomarkers like glucose lactase and uh, cortisol can be detected they are non invasive and often uh, they offer a convenient and a comfortable way to monitor health and fitness wearing just like a dress or a watch or something a wearable one smartphone based sensors okay mainly uh, our uh, iphone <laughs> they are using uh, many such type of sensors uh, they are using ph sensor temperature sensor humidity sensors uh, many other uh, smart uh, uh, smartphone uh, uh, industries they are working on uh, using uh, this type of uh, disposable sensors uh, uh, it is also use easy to use uh, and uh, having some cost effectiveness uh, no need to have a separate uh, disposal sensors uh, disposal sensors are actually non disposable uh, in uh, smartphone it's not that uh, once we use a smartphone we have to throw okay the same concept it is used uh, which is used in disposal sensor that is used uh, in uh, this type of applications uh, okay uh, later you don't think that uh, okay i'm not extending that uh, joke uh, let it joke be there uh, paper based sensors paper based sensor we know normal paper uh, similar type of concept as normal uh, low cost biodegradable and uh, uh, paper only used uh, which is having some coating on that uh, on the paper which can be used as a sensor Microfluidic sensors. Uh, microfluidics means a very small volumes, micro level uh, volumes are used. Uh, therefore, microfluidic channels to manipulate the analyze a small amount of uh, fluid with a high level of sensitivity and selectivity. 
artificial intelligence based sensors very important for a computer science uh, students uh, because you are uh, going towards the artificial intelligence uh, data science uh, okay so researchers have developed the disposable sensors uh, which use the artificial intelligence algorithms to analyze the sensor data and provide the real time feedback uh, with a very high level of accuracy so now i am also using many such type of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, in my preparing the study materials so please do subscribe and support me my name is dr prasad pujilam my youtube channel is my intuition 4865 so thank you very much for uh, listening